Wait! I'm not built like other men. You are nothing without me. Say it. Mine. No, this isn't another trailer for the new Ridley Scott movie hitting theaters today. Instead, we are delving into a topic intricately connected to it. Join me as I explore the fascinating Chateau de Malmaison, a residence where Napoleon and Josephine wrote their own chapter of power, love and timeless elegance. The Chateau de Malmaison is situated in Rueil Malmaison, a charming suburb west of Paris. Getting there is really easy and cheap. Just take Metro Line 1 to La Défense and from there, bus 258 towards Rueil Malmaison La Jonchère. Exit at Le Château bus stop and you are only 8 minutes away from the Château. The cost will be only 2T plus tickets each way. A sumptuous property of Empress Josephine, the Chateau de Malmaison, built around 1622, was bequeathed to the state in 1904. It was then transformed into a museum in 1905 thanks to the generosity of donors and patrons who loved the Napoleonic legend. The chateau was purchased by Napoleon Bonaparte and Josephine in 1799. It served as their residence for several years. Josephine extensively redecorated the chateau in a luxurious and fashionable style. In this anteroom are the portraits of the six sheikhs of Cairo. Malmaison was a central place during Napoleon's rise to power, and Josephine's influence on the arts and culture of the time is evident in the chateau's design. In many rooms, as in this music room, they keep the shutters closed to preserve the beauty of the furniture and the paintings. Josephine used this room as a gallery dedicated to modern painters, from whom the Empress commissioned many works. The golden living room is where Josephine received her guests. It is said that Josephine was pretty good at playing pool. Josephine took personal charge of the menus to make sure our guests would be presented in this dining room with their favorite dishes. Napoleon came to Malmaison very frequently, so he had this room, the council chamber, created to hold the council of ministers. It takes the shape of a military tent.
Napoleon read widely. He had 4,500 books in this library. Let's now climb up to the first floor, in Napoleon's apartments. After moving to Malmaison, Napoleon slept in his wife Josephine's bedroom, on the other side of the castle. But the council chamber and his office being far from the Empress's apartments, he had this drawing room created, and the bedroom that we will see next, just above the council chamber. This is Napoleon's bedroom. Well, in fact, it is actually twice as large as the original bedroom. If Napoleon and Josephine moved from Malmaison to Saint-Cloud in 1804, the Emperor slept here for a few more nights in June 1815, just before being exiled. Josephine had died the year before in 1814, and Napoleon wanted to see one last time this place where he had lived his best years with his one and only love. This table, the Austerlitz table, is one of the jewels of Malmaison. It represents the emperor and the 12 field marshals and great officers who won the Austerlitz battle. Napoleon crossing the Alps by David. This room shows many of the personal belongings of the Empress Josephine. This is where Josephine's bathroom used to be. This frieze, with a mythological theme, comes from the living room of the Parisian home of Napoleon. This is the first room in Josephine's apartment, the anteroom. There are portraits of Josephine, as well as objects that belong to her. And this is Josephine's bedroom, where Napoleon also slept, until he decided to have his own apartment on the south wing. This red bedroom was the one she used when she slept with Napoleon. But in fact, just behind the ceremonial bedroom was her everyday bedroom. She found this corner bedroom lighter and sunnier. Next is Josephine's boudoir, where she would spend a lot of time. She would also use it as a private dining room. On the third floor of the chateau is a very interesting exhibition about Napoleon's exile on St. Helena Island. Here's the death mask of Napoleon. Mm -hmm. 
A large stone was then lowered down on a grave, uncovered the moderate space now sufficient for the man for whom Europe was once too little, Walter Scott. Now let's go and visit the beautiful gardens. The gardens are so enchanting that there's no need to hear my voice. So I'll let the beauty speak for itself. As we bid farewell to Chateau de Malmaison and its mesmerizing gardens, the echoes of history and beauty linger, capturing the timeless charm of Napoleon and Josephine's legacy. <laughs> 